In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at finding some relative extrema for a function. This one's got um, a particular feature in there. That's why I chose this one in particular that I want to address. So let's just start by finding the critical numbers. So finding critical numbers. Okay, we find critical numbers by taking the derivative of the function. So we're going to do f prime of x, and we're going to use quotient rule on this one. So the uh, bottom times the derivative of the top, which would be 4x to the third, minus the top, which is x to the fourth plus 1, times the derivative of the bottom, which is a 2x, and then all over the bottom squared. So x squared, and then squaring that again. Doing a little simplifying here, we'll have a 4x to the 5th minus, doing a little distributing there, a 2x to the 5th minus a 2x, and then all over x to the 4th. I've got some like terms there that I can combine now, so I will have a 2x to the 5th minus 2x all over an x to the 4th. All right, at this point, then I can set both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero and find some critical points there. So let's come up here and do that. If I take the denominator and set that equal to zero, x to the fourth equals zero. Taking the fourth root of both sides, I get x equals zero. All right, now this is that special case that I wanted to address here. Zero is not in the domain of this function because I've got an x squared on the bottom, so x cannot be zero. All right, so let's put not in domain. All right, so therefore it's not a critical number, not a critical number. However, we're going to address it here in a little bit and show you why it's still important. All right, now we're going to take that numerator and set that equal to zero. So 2x to the fifth minus 2x equals zero. Let's pull out a 2x. That's going to leave me with an x to the fourth minus a 1. All right, factoring this, let's keep going and factor all the way down here. I'm going to have a 2x and then I'm going to have an x squared plus 1 and an x squared minus 1 for the difference of two squares there. Now let's keep factoring because here is another difference of two squares. So 2x, x squared plus 1, and then this factors into an x plus 1 and an x minus 1. So now I have definitely completely factored this. All right, now sending each one of these equal to zero. This, I get x equals zero. All right, and again, not in my domain, okay? Setting this equal to zero, I get no critical numbers here because it would be an imaginary number. All right, setting this equal to zero, I'm gonna get x equal to negative one. Setting this equal to zero, I get x equals one. All right, so definitely critical numbers here at negative one and one. Now, zero popped up in two different places, but zero is not considered to be a critical number, all right, because it's not in the domain. However, that doesn't say that it's not important and it's not something that we need. All right, now to visualize why this isn't a critical number, all right, I've done a, a rough sketch here of what the graph looks like so we have a visual representation to look at, okay? Taking this x to the fourth plus one, over x squared, this is a really rough hand sketch of this, all right? Critical numbers we found at the negative one and one, clearly because I've got horizontal tangents right there, all right? But x equals zero is not defined because I've got a vertical asymptote there. We've got some unbounded behavior going on right there at x equals zero. So while it, even though it is not considered to be a critical number, because it's not in the domain of the function, all right, it's still important because something cool is going on. We've got that unbounded behavior going on right there. And so when we do the number line test, it you are going to want to put that zero on your number line, okay? Just because, not because it's a critical number, but because something important is going on right there. Okay, so at this point, I've got my two critical numbers and I've got x equals zero that I'm gonna go ahead and put on my number line. So drawing a number line. We'll make it kind of long here. All right, so we need um, a negative one, we need a zero, and we need 
a 1. All right, let's put our intervals across the top. Negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 0, 0 to 1, and 1 to infinity. All right, and then let's go ahead and label. We need to take a look at our derivative and we need to take a look at our original function here. And let's uh, go back and identify where that derivative was. Okay, so there's that derivative. All right, so picking a number in here, which would be a relatively large negative number, okay, then I'm going to have a negative on top and a positive on the bottom. So dividing there, I would get a negative. All right, picking a smaller negative number, Okay, smaller negative number there is going to give me a positive divided by a positive, so the overall answer is going to be a positive. Picking a positive answer here, positive small number will give me a positive on top and um, a negative on top, positive on the bottom, so then it's going to be a negative. And then picking a really big number there is going to give me a positive divided by a positive, so it's going to be positive looking at that first derivative. Now, that tells me then, in this section, since it's a negative, the original function will be decreasing. And in this section here, the original function will be increasing. Here, it will be decreasing. And then here, it will be increasing. All right, now, from this, all right, I can determine my extrema. It's going from decreasing to increasing. My original function is going from decreasing to increasing right here. So then that means that I have a minimum at, and it would be the ordered pair of negative 1. Plugging negative 1 into that original function there is going to give me a 2. And then here... We said zero is not in the domain, even though it's going from increasing to decreasing. All right, remember it's not in the domain. I've got something else happening there. It was that vertical asymptote here, so don't accidentally forget and then claim that that is a maximum. So maybe remind yourself not a critical number, because that will not be a maximum. And then here at one, again, I'm going from the original function is going from decreasing to increasing. So then I have a minimum at one and then plugging one back in I'm going to have a two again. So that relative extrema I've got two minimums occurring at negative one two and one two. Alright so um, one example just one example of finding that relative extrema but then with a special case where you end up finding a zero and it turns out to not be a critical number but yet very very important important enough that you're going to definitely want to put it on that number line when you're testing your regions definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thanks